Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's presentation of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. I work here at the international headquarters of Jinshin Jitsu in Scottsdale, Arizona, where right now it's 100 plus, perhaps. And uh, it's my pleasure to share information gleaned from the time I have been studying Mary Burmeister and Jim Arai's Jin Shin Jitsu and the self-help books, one, two, and three. So um, those of you that have been following along fairly diligently, maybe um, live or on the replays, will know that most recently we've been looking at how to harmonize attitudes, and we understand attitudes to be embedded emotional responses to situations. They become crystallized within us. Um, we learned from Jiro and Mary and Chinese medicine that we can actually harmonize all these different attitudes using our fingers and thumbs. And in self-help book one, Mary gave us formulas that we could use and practice with to harmonize the attitudes of, um, let me share the screen so that we can look at those attitudes in a little more. The attitudes of worry, fear, anger, sadness, and try-tos. And we talked in terms of underlying all these attitudes, the core issue is really fear. Deep down inside, we don't feel that we can accomplish something and our response is one of these five. And there may even be variations on the theme, <clears throat> guilt. Uh, that could be part of the whole picture as well. So when you look at that diagram there, you can see I've segmented it, um, three lines going across there from the tip of the finger down. And we talked last week about how Holding the fingers in the different segments will help the different regions that we harmonize in the body with Jin Chin Jitsu. So B is for bust line, y, a W is for waistline, and H is for hip line. So that when we're going through the practice of harmonizing attitudes using the fingers, we can explore those segments and see how sensitive perhaps they may be or not. And maybe that will help us focus in on those areas, either during the practice or later using Jin Shin Jitsu flows. We also talked how the sides of the fingers are related to the organ function flows and the top and the, the palm side and the back side are actually related to <clears throat> the unmanifest number flows. Um, those of you that are brand new to Jin Shin Jitsu, don't concern yourself, don't worry, don't get into too much fear about all these understandings and definitions. Once you start experiencing and exploring the balancing and harmonizing, you probably are going to be drawn to getting the books, the self-help books, and you'll explore, and things become self-evident. We learn on a journey, as it were, so to speak. <clears throat> so, today we're going to look at how can we harmonize the attitude of sadness and grief. This is ordinarily related to disharmony in the lung and large intestine, which can be harmonized by the ring finger and indeed the index and the thumb. And in Mary's teaching in self-help book one on page 32, those of you that have it, page 32. She talks about um, this whole process of harmonizing grief and sadness. And I'll just read briefly what she has to say here. She says, um, grief, open parenthesis, negative, mucus forming, common sense. In brackets, again, an imbalance in our individualized lung and large intestine energy pattern. Yeah, so... Um, who came first, the chicken or the egg, the attitude or the blockages in the lung and large intestine? I'm going to suggest to you it was highly likely to be our thinking processes that created a negative attitude that disharmonized 
our energy field, which in turn disharmonized our organs, et cetera, et cetera. I'll suggest that to you. You may explore that yourself. And as time goes on, you may learn as you witness your thinking, oh, yeah, when I think in a certain way, I feel different from when I think in another way. And when I feel or think in a more uplifting way, I tend to feel uplifted. I tend to feel happier, generally more positive. I'm not saying, you know, I want you to consider being um, a Pollyanna and everything is great and wonderful. I'm just saying that looking at things through a lens of harmony is going to help harmonize your energy field, your organs, everything else, a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently than if you respond to something and stay with a shock or negative fear response. That's all. It's perfectly authentic to go through all these um, particular attitudes of worry, fear, anger, sadness, and trying to as an initial response. It's whether you stay with that response that makes a difference between how you transform or whether you let things embed, crystallize, and get stuck. And when you get stuck, energy can't flow and life can seem to be out of harmony. So too much words perhaps, but worth emphasizing again and again. We're talking about harmony. We're talking about balance. We're not saying be more this, less that. We're saying find the harmony. Show us the harmony. So today we're looking at um, harmonizing grief and the fingers and thumbs that Mary used, left or right, were the <coughs> thumb, the index finger, the middle, and the ring. And we're going to do this practice that I use cultivating the process of the, excuse me, <coughs> headphones slipping off there, sneaky. The 36 breaths, four sets of nine exhalation inhalations. One breath is an exhalation inhalation. We do um, nine of them on each digit for this practice. After the ninth, we slip into the ninth space or depth, I'd like to suggest, where we are remaining in a more neutral space, where we become the observer. We see what happened in that part of the journey. Did anything happen? Have we moved on? Have we stayed still? Whatever. So it's a journey. And um, for those of you that are new today, we're going to keep our body upright as much as possible. It's good to support yourself. The spine likes to be straight because energy travels up and down the spine. And if it's kinky in any kind of way, it slows and impedes the progress of the energy, just like electric current going through a circuit. And we keep our feet firmly on the ground. An electric current likes an earth cable and we like to feel earth. We like to sense that energy is coming from head to toe. And we talked about moving energy from safety energy lock number four, the occiput through the 15, the waistline, hip line, sorry, hip line to the big toes and then spiraling back from the big toes through the hip line to the four. So that gives you maybe some image, those of you that are very visual of how energy moves from head to toe. It also moves from skin to bone, just in case you were wondering. And so we'll go through this process and you, you make the choice. Left emphasizes the exhale, right emphasizes the inhale. Generally, we begin with an exhale. We Exhale, uh, drop our shoulders in self-help book two, the recipe. Relax, be the dropping of your shoulders, bow your head slightly, be the smile. Exhale, unload all your dirt, dust and greasy crime, all skepticisms, fears. Enjoy inhaling, receiving your breath of life. Be the essence within the breath. The essence is energy, light in all its different frequencies as it dances down into the body. Be the essence within the breath, infinite truth, infinite self, and know myself. And jump a cable to begin. Mary called holding our digits, jumper cabling, because we're allowing the universal energy to jump to us, to enhance and harmonize, to energize our body. So it's helpful to close your eyes when we do this practice, um, reduces 
the input of the mind and the senses which love to gabble on when we would prefer to be more peaceful. So let's just begin and just sit quietly, place your hands in your groin area, in your hip area, just like that. Palms up, palms up um, again um, encourages the exhale, downward movement. Palms <clears throat> this way is encouraging the inhale. So we sit with the palms up to encourage an exhale. And just become aware where you are right now, right in this moment. Be here now. Just observe. You can close your eyes and just head to hip to toe it. Be the observer. Be the witness. Where am I at? Feel yourself beginning to relax and your shoulders beginning to sink down, down, down through the hip line into the feet. Grounding, grounding, grounding. I like to see the whole of my shoulders going deep, deep, deep through my feet, right down to the core center of the earth. I like to really feel grounded. And then just sense as the energy finds its journey back up through from the big toe through the hip line to the head. Heaven to earth, earth to heaven, head to toe, toe to head. And then choose. Just hold each digit for a little bit and just massage it, each one. When I say massage, just connect. It's the first four, each side, and decide very quickly, if you can, which side you want to work with. Normally, the first impulse of, yeah, it's this side, is the right one. And for a change today, I actually am going to hold the right hand. Mary talked about the right side of energy flows as influencing the present. So maybe I need to harmonize something in the present. The left is past generational ancestral. So let's begin keeping that posture, connect to the ground with the feet firmly flat, big toes connecting to the earth. And we're going to exhale all the way head to toe, holding that first digit of the thumb, and as the energy spirals down to the earth, it then returns, spiraling clockwise in both directions on the inhale. Completing one breath, and we're going to do this eight more times. Here we go. And when you reach the ninth exhalation, inhalation, holding left or right thumb, whichever you chose, just place your hands in your lap and just become the observer. Where are you now? Head to toe, just have a quick scan. Notice left and right, up and down. Just be aware clues to perhaps where there is energy blockages in your pathways, your energy pathways in your body. And then we move right or left, left or right to the next digit for those that haven't done this before. Index finger, right index finger or left index finger. 
Holding again, exhaling. Nine exhalation inhalations, holding that index finger. I'm very well aware that um, we each have different metabolic rates, so you may have already finished the second set of nine. When that happens, just place your hands in your lap, still holding the index finger, and slip into observation mode. We're all at our own pace. Okay, so having completed my second set of nine exhalation inhalations, holding this time the index finger, I just slip into neutral and I observe head to toe, skin to bone, what's going on, where, who, what, why and when. In one simple word, I observe the breath. And as we observe, we connect more to the frequency of being rather than doing because we become the witness rather than the doer. So then <clears throat> we move to the third digit. And in this practice, it's going to be the middle finger, right or left. And again, we hold. Remember, you can concentrate on the tip, the middle segment, the bottom segment, if you wish. You can also focus on the side, if you wish. I'm going to hold the whole of it. And again, we begin the practice. Exhale, energy moving down the front, head, hip, toe. Toe, hip, head, nine times. Here we go.
And as you come to the ninth exhalation, inhalation, slip into that neutral space. Nine, remember, signifying your numerology at least, end of a cycle, beginning of a new. So we sit in that ninth energy space and observe. And then the final finger that we use for this particular practice for harmonizing sadness and grief, ring finger. So hold the ring finger right or left, place it in your lap, whatever's comfortable. Drop your shoulders, exhale, bow slightly. Let a smile come, if it will. Exhale and inhale. Nine times. Here we go. And as you come to that ninth exhalation, inhalation, just remain in that neutral zone and be the observer. This is one of the practices where we naturally use four digits so that marries up well to the 36 breaths, the four sets of nine. But you know, there isn't really any limit on how long you practice. So you could end up giving yourself a hug. Why not? The hug is the um, thumb underneath the shoulder girdle and the fingers at the side of the shoulder blade, left or right. Or you could choose to go back to one of the fingers which you felt needed more attention. Or you could, as I often show, do the self-help mediator Low, <clears throat> standing up, my knees are together, my right hand is over my left shoulder here, on so change lock my three, and my <clears throat> ring and thumb are together. So that's how you can, if you wish, finish a practice, and you can do as many breaths as you like at that point. Be your own testimony, be the artist. I just want to say, in point of fact, this mudra is connecting to two fingers which harmonize lung and large intestine as well. So when it comes to doing the quickie version of these processes, these practices, in this case it would be just hold the ring finger. But if you know that you can also hold the thumb with the ring finger on the nail, lung, the large intestine, lung through the thumb, Hey, you're the artist. Do that. So choose whichever you want and we'll just relax and if we had any sadness, 
Some people have what they call um, seasonal affected disorder, which spells sad. Whatever, you know, when grief or maybe depression, negativity overwhelms us, remember you always have the breath to begin with and then you have your fingers to continue with. So you're feeling depressed or sad, breathe out. Begin to let the process of release, dirt, dust, grease, grime, those feelings begin to dissipate and move to the earth. And then remember your fingers or not, but let the energy release. The more we hold on, and really a lot of sadness and grief is to do with attachment or over-attachment to this, that, and the other, whether it be a job, a relationship, or whatever, and feeling, ah, I wanted that to stay. Well, I tell you, the only thing um, that ever is constant in the universe, as far as I can tell, is change. And the breath is a good way of helping us understand that because as it moves through us, it teaches us about how energy pulses at different times in different places and changes. So we've got a simple tool to help us understand perhaps change is inevitable. It's the construct of the human nervous system. And indeed, if you believe and understand as above, so below, it's also true around us. The environment is changing too. Maybe that should encourage us to change our attitudes, to transform by allowing natural energy to assist us. It's already wishing to change and transform, so why don't we just let it? So thank you very much, everybody, everywhere in the world, wherever you are, for joining me today in about whenever it happens. <laughs> there will be a replay of this on YouTube. I think you're also sent a replay from Webinar Jam too. So if you missed a bit or if you think your friends might benefit, the replay is available on YouTube. The address is up there www.youtube.com forward slash Jinshin Jitsu official one word. Those of you that would like to explore more in the self-help books, I've put up the link where you could purchase them from our store. And in the meantime, oh dear, my hair clip keeps falling down. In the meantime, have a wonderful, peaceful rest of the day and rest of the week. Until next time, au revoir, stay safe, be wise, be gentle with yourself, be kind with everything as much as you can. See you next week.